August 1945, World War II in the Pacific was nearing a brutal crescendo. Japanese cities had already suffered extensive firebombing and blockade. Allied planners feared that a full invasion of Japan would cost enormous lives. At the same time, the United States had completed the Manhattan Project in secrecy. Scientists warned of unprecedented destructive power, some urged caution and study. U.S. leaders faced a grim calculus, speed the end of war or risk massive invasion losses. President Truman, who became president in April 1945, inherited the final decision. At Potsdam on July 26, 1945, Allies issued an ultimatum demanding Japan's unconditional surrender. Japan did not agree to unconditional surrender, and its government remained divided. U.S. military estimates projected American casualties in a mainland invasion into the hundreds of thousands. Some military leaders argued the bomb could end the war without a costly invasion. Others warned about legal, moral, and long-term political consequences of using the weapon. August 6, 1945, A.B. 29 dropped Little Boy on Hiroshima. Immediate deaths in Hiroshima are estimated at roughly 70,000 to 80,000, with totals over 140,000 by the end of 1945. August 9, 1945, Fat Man struck Nagasaki three days later. Nagasaki's immediate death toll was roughly 40,000, totals reached about 70,000 by the end of 1945. The scale of destruction and the new reality of nuclear weapons shocked global opinion. J. Robert Oppenheimer later recalled, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. August 15, 1945, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's acceptance of surrender terms. In his address, he urged the nation to endure the unendurable and suffer what is insufferable. Casualty totals remain contested and include both immediate deaths and later radiation-related fatalities. The bombings ushered in the nuclear age, reshaping post-war diplomacy and military strategy. Historians continue to debate the necessity, alternatives, and moral responsibility of the decision. Understanding this history requires primary sources, archival evidence, and sober, careful analysis.